Hey, it's Steve. Welcome again to the Universal Channel Strip Ableton Rack. In this video, I'm going to show you what's in the rack and give you an idea of how to use some of these devices, or at least tell you why they are in this order. Uh, the backstory is that I built this modeled on a digital mixing board that I use for live sound. So when you're looking at a band and they have like 16 mics for vocals, drums, guitars, bass, instruments, every mic is going to need a different kind of treatment, but they're all going to use the same tools. So on that mixing board, you press a button to select the channel and you get a rack of tools and they go in order like this. There's gain to add basic level on the mics, high pass filter to cut out some low end if you don't need it, like on a vocal mic, you don't want the bump some stepping on the stage and stuff. Then there's a gate for dynamics if you want to cut out some, make some empty space and only have the loud sounds come through. Compressor for dynamics again, EQing for tone, that's parametric EQ, cut and boost. And then finally a limiter to catch peaks. And then after you have the sound in, you go to your pan knob and your output volume fader to bring the sound into the mix. So this is what I call a recipe rack. You go through the knobs in order, and if you don't want to use a knob, they're all mapped to switch off and bypass at the lowest levels. So you don't have to use them. They're, they're tools if you need them. You don't have to use every tool on every sound. To give you an idea of what these tools are doing, I'm just gonna play this little mix and start going through these sounds. First up, utility. If you need to add gain, you can do that. If you want to isolate just the mono part of a sound, you can have mono, or if you want to get just the stereo section, it's like the mid-side thing. That might be a little more advanced, but it's a useful problem-solving tool. Again, you don't have to use it. So let's bypass our utility and go on to the high-pass filter. Uh, again, most sounds in electronic music have a little bit of low-end, low-frequency that you don't need in the mix. So using high-pass filters carefully can really help clean up your mix a lot to make space for the low-end kick drum and sub-bass. Now on a full mix, I'm not gonna do any high pass filtering. Next up, the gate. This is something I might use on a beat loop if there's like, if I have a drum loop that has reverb built in and I don't want the reverb, I might dial down the gate. So I only get the drum hits coming through and it mutes the reverb out. Now, as you get more into audio engineering, you can go through and like, you know, change these settings to make it work the way you would want to uh, for whatever purpose you're doing. So let's roll this up and bypass. Um, gates are great for sound design and tone shaping with rhythm. I like them a lot. Next up, the next part of dynamics is compressor. Everybody knows about compressors. The basic trick for compression is balancing your makeup gain with your gain reduction. So when you dial down the threshold, notice the compressor is bypassed. When you touch the, thre touch the threshold, it switches on. You dial it down until you see some gain reduction happening. And actually, you should do this with your eyes closed and hear the gain reduction. Then use the makeup gain to get the level back up to kind of balance the gain reduction so you're controlling the dynamics. Now, this does not sound good on this mix, but just to illustrate the technique of how you're doing it. And then again, as you get more involved with compression and engineering, you'll understand how to use ratio and attack time and release time and that kind of thing. So let's bypass the compressor and go to the EQ. I like to double click on the EQ and see the frequencies. We've got the EQ scale. EQing, you always have to dial in the frequencies for the track you're working on. Let me just run through a basic review of what frequencies are in here and why. Um, this is set up essentially for a drum loop. So the first one is a high pass filter that's at 55 hertz. In other words, if you're doing a, a loop that has a kick drum in it, you might want to take the low kick drum out of your beat loop and put a second kick drum in that's on its own channel. So I just put that in at 55 hertz as a basic starting place. EQing is a starting place. These are not finished presets to use for every sound. You gotta dial in your frequencies based on what you're doing. Next up on band two, 80 hertz, a little bit of a bump so that you get some more um, kind of low frequency if you want that. 275. Cut come up, some of that like ooh, ooh, ooh. Next frequency, 600. You can almost always cut 600 and it's gonna sound better. It's kind of scratchy. I call that like the cardboard box frequency. Um, I wanna cut a loop out here. And where's that beat come in? push this up a little bit. Okay, so we were talking about 600 hertz, and again, 275. It's kind of a low, mid, muddy area. 
that. We can usually dump out 275 and 600 on drums. It's gonna sound better. 1.6 can be great on synths or vocals or guitars. Uh, it can be harsh on play around with it. It can be a little bit screechy. So that's kind of an indicator of where to start, not a final place. 2.5K, great for hand claps, snares. It's kind of like that bright mid-range kind of sound, like the middle of the mid-range. Now, four kilohertz. Our ears are really sensitive to this frequency, so that's a good place to put in a notch, especially for like open hi-hats and cymbals and crashes and things like that. And then finally, a little bit of a lift on the high end with a high shelf EQ that makes sounds feel more airy and spacious. Those are just some frequencies that I, that I know as reference points that uh, help for mixing. So that's kind of like a preset for a drum loop, basically. Let's turn the EQ scale down and bypass. Then finally, there's final limiter gain. If you want to add a little bit more level for gain staging purposes, you can do that. Or for sound design, you can just crank it up and mash your sound into the limiter ceiling. I'm not gonna say it sounds good in this mix, but that's available as a tool. And again, this bypasses. So uh, that's what's in the Universal Channel Strip. And I really do use this on all my mixes. I mean, it's such a handy collection of tools. You got what you want if you need to just do compression and EQ and bypass the other stuff. Or if you wanna go deeper into gate and that kind of thing, you can dial that in. Let me show you where you can learn more about mixing. Take that loop off. Uh, if you're interested in finding out how I make mixes and what to do with gain staging and how to get a solid low-end mix that drops some bass every time without getting frustrated, I'd like, you to I'd like to point you to this course called Make Space for Bass. This is on the Mix Detecture course library where I host my online Ableton courses. Uh, these are really fun. It's hands-on tutorials where you actually learn by doing a project inside live. And Make Space for Bass is, that's literally what the course is about, making a mix so when you get to the end, you have a wide stereo mix with a heavy deep low end and enough headroom for mastering. In other words, it's not getting crushed by a limiter. You don't have to do multi-band compression on your master channel. You'll learn how to make a fantastic stereo mix that drops some bass and it's ready for mastering to do it the right way, just using audio engineering principles in the right order. Uh, this is stuff I learned in the last 25 years of making electronic music and working as a live sound engineer at literally hundreds of shows. DJing for hundreds of shows and doing live sound. That's what I've been doing for my career. And I put all that information into this course where you learn by doing it. So Make Space for Bass is available for there on the Mix and Texture course library. Uh, you can take a look at the curriculum to see kind of like what you're gonna learn. And if you're curious about the course, but you don't wanna jump in and get the whole thing right away, check out on Gumroad. This is the Mix and Texture Gumroad site, uh, store.mixtexture.com. Make Space for Bass, you can start unit one for free, meaning you can download a short version of the first lesson to see how these hands-on tutorials work and start learning how to make mixes better. And then if you wanna go far farther, you can, or if you don't like it, I'll give you your money back for the $19. It's not a big deal. Just wanna let you know that's available. Breakthrough concept, a loud track doesn't come from jacking up your faders into the red or cranking down a limiter on the master. Real loudness comes from making a balanced mix where every sound fills its own space, especially in the low end. That's what it's all about. So if you're struggling with your kick drum and sub bass, Make Space for Bass is gonna help you out a lot. And as always, if you have any questions, get in touch, steve at mixatexture.com. I'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching, see you later, and I hope to hear from you soon.